So this lesson is on L'Hopital's and indeterminate forms. And when we talk about an indeterminate form, we've got indeterminate forms of several types. Okay? We have an indeterminate form of what? Zero over zero. Right? So is this one or is this zero? That's what makes it indeterminate. We don't know. We can't actually define what the value is in particular for a zero over zero. What about uh, plus or minus infinity over infinity? Same deal. Right? We don't know. We can't figure out what exactly that is as uh, a, a limit. What about zero times infinity? All right. Or we have infinity minus infinity, zero to the zero, infinity to the zero, and one to the infinity. Okay. Well, all of these things, they are called indeterminate forms. All right. And we've got them as, uh, certain types. Okay. So here's a basic one. Um, this is a basic form. This one here is also a basic form. This is what we call uh, an indeterminate product. This is an indeterminate difference. And these three, they are called indeterminate powers. So that's how we're going to classify them. We can classify them into kind of our basic form. Okay. These are going to be the ones that we're going to use L'Hopital's rule for, although all of them will actually use L'Hopital's rule for. Then we have our product form, right, which is a zero times infinity. Okay. Is the zero more powerful? Is the infinity more powerful? We have the difference form infinity minus infinity, and then we have these three different kinds of indeterminate powers. So as we're working with limits utilizing L'Hopital's, what we want to do is we actually want to go in and run check to make sure that we've got one of these different forms. If we don't, we can't actually utilize what's called L'Hopital, which is the, the method that we're going to use. Okay. Now here's what L'Hopital's rule says. Okay. Suppose f and g are differentiable, and g prime of x is not equal to zero on an open interval i that contains a. Okay. So um, f and g are differentiable. g prime of x is not equal to zero because that's going to end up being our denominator. Okay. Um, and then we want to suppose that the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals zero and the limit of x approaches a of g of x is equal to zero. Or we have infinity and infinity. So either we have this form here, zero over zero, or we have infinity over infinity. Okay. We have one of the two forms. If we have one of those two forms, then what we know is we get this result. And this is a very powerful result. We're going to see this quite a lot um, as we work. And that is, is that the limit of f over g is going to equal the limit of f prime over g prime. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the derivative of the top and the bottom, all right, and then take the limit of that, okay, if the limit on the right-hand side or the right side exists or is infinity or negative infinity, okay? So... What we want to get here, the primary idea here is, is that if we have ones of these forms, these basic forms, zero over zero or infinity over infinity, negative infinity over negative infinity, whichever, then what we can do is we can take the derivative of both the top and the bottom, okay? And then we find the limit of that and see if that's indeterminate. And the fact is, is that if that still remains indeterminate, we can continue to take L'Hopital's until we finally get a determinate form, okay? All right. One thing to note is, is that zero and infinity, right, are do end up being determinate forms. It's the only ones that are indeterminate, right, are the ones of these types. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples and see how this works for each one of our different types. So let's take, for example, the limit as x approaches 1 of the natural log of x over x minus 1. Now, if I were just to do straight substitution, what you can see is this is the form of 0 over 0. Okay, so it's indeterminate. It's indeterminate of the form 0, 0, 0 over 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use L'Hopital's. I'll take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. So this is going to be then the limit of x approaches 1 of natural log of x over x minus 1 will equal the uh, limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over x divided by 1. And now what we can do is just plug in values, and that ends up being 1 over 1, and that equals 1. And so that, in fact, is the limit. The limit of, as x approaches 1 of ln of x over x minus 1 is just simply going to equal 1. That's L'Hopital's. Pretty simple, yeah? Yeah. Not bad. Let's take a look at this one. The limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over x squared. Now, what we notice here is that e to the infinity is going to end up being equal to infinity, and x squared to the infinity is infinity. So we have a limit of the form of infinity over infinity. So it's indeterminate. Okay? 
So now I'm going to use L'Hopital's. So I'm going to take the limit as x approaches infinity, right? And I'll take the derivative, so that'll be e to the x over 2x. And what I want to notice is that this is still indeterminate. This is still going to be infinity over infinity, so I'll use L'Hopital's again. So now we get the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over 2, because that's now the, the second derivative for both the top and the bottom. And this is now equal to infinity over 2, which is going to simply equal infinity. So now we've actually come to a determinant form, and you can see that that determinant form is now infinity. What about this one? Let's take a look at this example. The limit as x approaches infinity from the negative side of sine x over 1 minus cosine x. Okay, well, what I want to do now is I need to go through and check and make sure that this is in fact indeterminate. Turns out this is now 0 over 1 minus negative 1, right? Because cosine of pi is negative 1 as you approach from the negative side. So this is zero over two, which is equal to zero. So it's not indeterminate. Don't use L'Hopital's, okay? You've actually gotta be kind of careful about this. All right, so make sure that you go in and you actually do your, che yeah, your checking to make sure that you do have an indeterminate form. What about indeterminate products now? So we saw the basic L'Hopital's rule. What about indeterminate products? Those are the form of infinity times zero. So let's take a look at the limit as x approaches um, zero from the positive side of x times ln of x. Well, what we see here is, is uh, the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side of x is just gonna be zero. And then the limit as x approaches zero from the positive side of ln of x is negative infinity, okay? So what we have here is we have something that is indeterminate, all right? The trick here and the trick with all of the ones that we're gonna be using after this is we want to transform our function into something where we can use L'Hopital's. So what that means in our case is we're gonna to have to turn this into some kind of like quotient. So this will be the limit as x approaches zero positive. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a little trick. I'm gonna make this ln of x divided by one over x. Okay, so now what I have is I have, again, now I'm gonna have one of the form of infinity, okay, or negative infinity over in this case, positive infinity, okay, which is indeterminate of the form that we can now use L'Hopital's. So notice it's, it's just kind of one of those tricks, a trick that we, we want to use, a little algebraic trick that will allow us to turn this into um, a form that we can use for L'Hopital's. So what we'll do now is take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So this is going to be 1 over x, and this one will be negative 1 over x squared. So this will end, excuse me, negative one over x. So this will now be equal to the limit as x approaches zero of one over x times negative x squared over one, which equals the limit as x approaches zero of just negative x, which is gonna be end up being zero. So that allows us actually to go in and solve for one of these indeterminate products. I want you to remember that this thing here, because we're gonna utilize this a little bit later, but the limit as x approaches zero positive of x ln of x is equal to zero. Okay, so just file that away, keep it over to the side, because we're gonna end up using it a little bit later. Okay, but same process that we're gonna use as we look at differences, and that as we um, end up looking at powers, we wanna transform our indeterminate form into one that we can use looking talls with. So now let's take a look at indeterminate differences. Those are the form of infinity minus infinity. So let's take an example. We've got the limit as x approaches one positive of one over ln of x minus one over x minus one. So this is gonna end up being one over ln of x, right? As we approach one positive, well, ln of x goes to zero as x goes to one. So this is gonna be one over zero or infinity, okay? In fact, positive infinity because we're going from the positive side. Then one over x minus one, is also going to be infinity because we're coming from the positive side again, so this is going to be one over po positive zero-ish. So that ends up being infinity. So that'll be infinity minus infinity, right? So again, we're indeterminate. Now in this case, it should be, I wouldn't call it maybe obvious, but like a little bit more obvious than the multiplication one, a little bit less of a trick. What we want to do is we want to combine these fractions in a, into a single fraction, right? A single indeterminate form so that we can use L'Hopital's. Okay, so we're going to take the limit as x approaches 1 positive 
and I'm going to make this x minus 1 minus the natural log of x over x minus 1 times the natural log of x. Okay, so we're going to basically just combine the terms. And what we'll see here is that this is going to end up equaling now, um, we got 1 minus 1 is 0 minus natural log of x, which is 0. So this is 0 divided by, and again, we're going to get 0 over 0. Okay, but we can now use L'Hopital's because we've got it of the form 0 over 0. Okay. So taking the derivative of the top and the bottom, what we get is we're going to get um, on the top, we'll let f of x equal x minus 1 minus natural log of x. So f prime of x will end up equaling um, 1 minus 1 over x, which is going to then just be x minus 1 over x if we turn it into a single fraction, which we generally want to do. Now what about g of x? Well, g of x is going to be x minus 1 times natural log of x. So we use the product rule. So g prime of x will equal the natural log of x plus x minus 1 divided by x. Okay? And so simplifying that, we'll get x ln of x plus x minus 1 all divided by x. So now our new form, limit as x approaches 1 plus, okay, of x minus 1 over x divided by x ln of x plus x minus 1 divided by x. This will then equal, what we're gonna, I'm going to do is I'm just going to invert and multiply. So I'll end up with x minus 1 divided by, or excuse me, the limit as x approaches 1 positive of x minus 1 over x ln of x plus x minus 1. Okay, now if we look here, I plug in my 1, I end up with 0 on the top, and I actually end up with 0 on the bottom. So again, I'm indeterminate, right? I still have an indeterminate form. I still have an indeterminate form. So what I want to do is I want to take the derivative again, okay? I'll use L'Hopital's again. And so this gives me then the limit as x approaches 1 from the positive, and the top will be 1, and the bottom will be using, uh, using the product rule first, ln of x plus x over x plus 1, okay? So this ends up giving me the limit as x approaches 1 positive of 1 over the natural log of x plus 2. Well, now I can directly substitute. This is going to end up giving me just 1 over 2, and that is, in fact, my limit, okay? So just briefly, when we're working with differences, what you're going to want to do most of the time when you're working with differences is you'll determine first, are they in an indeterminate form? And if that's the case, um, then you want to combine the fractions that are there or, or combine in some way to make it into a form that you can then use L'Hopital's for. And then you'll use L'Hopital's until you finally end up at a limit. So now let's look at indeterminate powers. And um, indeterminate power is one of the form of infinity to the zero, zero to the zero, or one to the infinity, okay? And so we'll, we'll deal with indeterminate powers by taking the natural log or exponentials um, for the particular functions that we're looking at. So let's say, for example, that we take the limit now as x approaches zero positive of one plus sine four x to the cotangent x, okay? Now, if I look at this, this limit is going to end up being, right, it's going to end up being 0, okay, to the negative infinity power, okay, 0 or 0 to the infinity. It's going to be in an indeterminate form. Excuse me. No, that's not right. It's going to be end up being 1 to the infinity power, okay, or negative infinity power, and so it's indeterminate, but of a power form, okay, so this one here, that's going to end up being 1. This is going to end up being negative infinity, so it's indeterminate, okay? Now, the limit, what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to set y equal to the limit as x approaches 0 positive of 1 plus sine 4x to the cotangent x, okay? What that'll allow us to do is that it'll allow us to take the natural log of both sides, and then at the end, we're going to end up being able to come back and get what y is. So this is going to give me natural log of y is equal to 
And this will be the limit as x approaches 0, if you remember your limit laws, of the natural log of 1 plus sine 4x cotangent x, which will equal, utilizing our, our laws, the limit as x approaches 0 positive of cotangent x times the natural log of 1 plus sine 4x. All right? And this, now, I'm going to rewrite this. I can rewrite it as the limit as x approaches 0 positive, okay, of natural log of 1 plus sine 4x, okay, divided by tangent of x. And now we're in a form, possibly, that we could use L'Hopital's form. If we take this limit, what we're going to get is this is going to end up giving me um, the natural log of 1, which is 0, divided by, and this will be um, the tangent of 0, tangent of 0, which is 0 as well. So hence, we can now use L'Hopital's. Okay? So notice, something to actually notice, really to notice here about calculus just in general. If I've got a problem with a power, okay, or I've got some issue where I'm solving or finding a derivative for a power, We'll even see this for log, uh, uh, integrals with powers. What you really want to be thinking is, is that if I've got a power, I'm going to be utilizing the natural log a lot because the natural log is the inverse of a power or an exponential. Okay, so it's really important to kind of notice that pattern that that's happening, right? You look at it, you go, oh, I've got a power. This looks indeterminant. So what do I do? I'm going to use a natural log, okay, because that's just what you do. Yes, it's it's that's the natural mathematical relationship, right? Exponential to log, they're related, right? Just like, for example, when we were doing the differences and we had two fractions being subtracted, find a common denominator, right? That's the that's the common theme in doing that kind of work. So you want to notice, oh, okay, that's kind of what I'm doing here, okay? From a doing perspective, right? Great. So that's all my little aside. Now what I want to say is I want to say, okay, so now I've got a form where I can use L'Hopital's. Okay, so I'm actually going to do each one of them separately. I'll take f of x. We'll let that equal the natural log of 1 plus sine 4x. Okay, and so f prime of x is going to equal 4 cosine 4x <coughs> divided by 1 plus sine 4x. And then g of x is going to equal tangent of x. So g prime of x is going to equal secant squared of x. <laughs> so my limit now, I have the limit as x approaches 0 of 4 cosine 4x over 1 plus sine 4x divided by secant squared x. Well, now I can just plug in some values. I can see that the top is going to end up being 4. 4 times cosine 0 is 4. So I got 4 divided by 1 plus 0, because sine 4x is 0. So this is going to be 1. And then secant squared x, or secant squared of 0, is going to be 1. So this all equals 4. All right? So that is, by the way, what natural log of y equals. So the natural log of y is going to equal 4. Okay? So we've gone in. We've transformed it into something that I can actually use L'Hopital's with. Now what I need to do is I need to get what y is, get what my limit actually is. Well, we should get now exactly what we're going to do. We're going to take the exponential e to the natural log of y. It's going to equal e to the 4. Okay? And so that means that y will equal e to the 4. All right? And so that's our limit. That's the limit as x approaches 0 plus of our f of x. Okay? So... Indeterminate power, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to use the natural log of x, okay, or exponentials. Why don't we take a look at one where we're going to utilize the exponential? So let's look at this one. We'll take the limit as x approaches 0 of x to the x. Now, what I want to notice here is if we take the natural log, well, I could take the natural log of both sides, I suppose. That wouldn't be too terrible. Um, or one other option, just in case it might be a little bit easier to do, is I'm going to actually notice that x equals e to the ln of x, okay? And so the limit, we get the limit as x approaches 0, for the positive side, okay, of x to the x is going to end up equaling the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side 
of e to the ln of x to the x. This is going to equal the limit as x approaches 0, the positive, of e to the x ln of x. Well, remember, I told you to kind of like notice, right? What does that equal? The limit as x approaches 0, positive of x ln of x, we already did this one, okay, earlier on in this section, is just going to equal 0. So what that means now is, is that my limit, okay, is going to equal e to the 0, which is just equal to 1. Yep, and there it is, okay? So again, very similar, okay? In fact, we, we could have... Uh, we could have actually utilized a uh, natural log on both sides if we wanted to with this one. But in this case, utilizing uh, um, e to the ln of x as a substitute for x allows us to, you know, utilize one of our past limits, this one right here, okay, and then solve for the limit. All right? So this completes the lecture on L'Hopital's. Big things, big key points, all right? One, check to determine... If the limit is in, is indefinite, is indeterminate, okay, you always should do that. Always check to see if you have an indeterminate limit, okay. Two, right, if it is of one of our forms, then transform it into a form that you can use L'Hopital's for. And then if you've already done that, you're going to use L'Hopital's. All right? So that concludes this uh, particular lecture. Um, it's going to take some practice. You're going to have to do some work. Again, we've got a lot of... Uh, Algebra thrown in with my calculus, so make sure that you get in and you, you practice, practice, practice. Okay, this concludes the lecture.